So Donald Trump is absolutely coming unglued at the moment because he's seeing Vice President Kamala Harris surge in the polls. He's seeing her popularity grow. He's seeing her have these rock star like rallies and he's seeing the enthusiasm and excitement that's on our side right now. And that is absolutely scaring him to death because you got to remember polls and popularity and being a celebrity is all that has ever mattered to Donald Trump. He's only in this for himself. He's only in this to further his own popularity. And at this point, he's only in it to a dodge accountability for his actions. A lot of people will say, man, they're trying to indict him in the middle of a campaign. No, he started campaigning in the middle of his indictments and he thought he was gonna be going up against Joe Biden. And he had a debate with Joe Biden where he capitalized on the moment. He saw Joe Biden, recognized that Joe Biden was having an off night. He pounced and he said to himself, oh boy, I can't wait to do that in front of a live audience, man. I'm really gonna get him. But then he got thrown a curveball and he's not able to adjust. He is not able to figure out what steps to take next to combat his new opponent because now he's the felon and she's the prosecutor and he realizes that when he stands on that debate stage with her, he's gonna have to bring a different game and he doesn't have one. It's just how popular am I? How big of a celebrity am I? No one can draw bigger crowds than me. So what does he do to combat Kamala Harris's growing popularity and surging in the polls? He holds a press conference at Mar-a-Lago. NPR did a piece on this, I highly recommend you read it, where they clocked him in at 162 lies. He just got up there and just did his same old tired act, repeated the same old lies over and over and over again because he thinks that will win people over. What he doesn't realize is the reason he's losing so many people is because so many people, including Republicans, including independents, are just sick and tired of his act at this point. We want something different. We're all tired of watching this cruelty. We're all tired of watching the same old rhetoric and propaganda and fear mongering. We want hope and we want joy and we want to see our country go back to a place that it should have been a long time ago. We don't want to see it go back to the Donald Trump years. We don't want to see it go back to that uh, level of cruelty that MAGA brought into the fold. So that's where we're at. He sees the excitement. And what does he do? He starts criticizing her crowd sizes and trying to say that she AI'd it. Take a look at this clip from Ben Micellis, and then we're going to talk more about it. He is making these posts, spreading this conspiracy that the crowds that have been attending Vice President Kamala Harris's speeches are AI. Donald Trump is making posts saying Vice President Kamala Harris AI'd it regarding photographs of massive crowds in Michigan, for example. Take a look at Donald Trump's post. This is like the biggest meltdown I've seen yet of Donald Trump. Take a look at this post. He goes, has anyone noticed that Kamala cheated at the airport? There was nobody at the plane and she AI'd it and showed a massive crowd of so-called followers, but they didn't exist. Donald Trump puts that in caps. She was turned in by a maintenance worker at the airport when he noticed the fake crowd picture, but there was nobody there. Later confirmed by the reflection of the mirror-like finish on the vice presidential plane. She's a cheater. She had nobody waiting and the crowd looked like 10,000 people. By the way, just take a look at what actually happened. There's like video of it. We'll play that right now. But Donald Trump started making posts like this at 1222 a.m. where he said, release the J6 hostages. That's what kind of started all of these posts. Then he started posting over and over again. And then he posted this. Look, we caught her with a fake crowd. There was nobody there. Again, Donald Trump is posting these delusional conspiracies. This is a man who is deeply, deeply unwell at the top of the Republican Party ticket. Yeah, that is the head of their party. He is the front runner of their party. That's their ticket. Him with the weirdo J.D. Vance just doubling down on their extremism, and they can't figure why that Vice President Kamala Harris and Tim Walz now are drawing rock star style crowds. Well, it's because we all see through Donald Trump and we're not going back. And here's what's so hilarious. Even Kevin McCarthy realizes this isn't a good move. This isn't a good look. Stop doing this. Even he is saying, don't start talking about her crowd sizes. Take a look. 
got to make this race not on personalities. Mm -hmm. Stop questioning the size of her crowds and start questioning her position when it comes to what did she do as attorney general on crime. Question what did she do when she was supposed to take care of the border as a czar. Mm -hmm. Question that they brought inflation. And she was the tie-breaking vote when it came to inflation, when it came to uh, IRS agents. This is an inter a, a perfect person to run against. You thought John Kerry was a flip-flopper. She is the biggest flip-flop with the most extreme positions, and you got a short time frame to do it. So don't sit back, mm -hmm. get out there, and start making the case, and use her own words to do it to her. You See, even McCarthy realizes what a bad move this is to talk about her crowd size, but I've got bad news for McCarthy. If they want to start talking about her record, they're going to lose there too, because Kamala Harris has a great record, and when you put it up against Donald Trump's record, you're going to realize that you never want to go back to those Trump years, that you never want our country to be led by such a maniac ever again. This guy is only in it for the celebrity. He's only in it for the popularity. He doesn't give a damn about anyone here, and neither does his weird old running mate, J.D. Vance. They're just in this for themselves, folks, and they're in it for the WWE style of theater. And he knows he can post those images to his crowd and they'll believe it. And he knows that they'll believe it even after we debunk it and point it out that they got duped. Because they've been trained that we're the bad guy. They've been taught by Trump that we're the bad guy in all of this. And so anything we say is just us trying to spread fake news about him. E even if you debunk something, they still look at it as fake because they've been taught to look at it that way. That's what we're up against. So let's keep up this excitement. Let's keep moving forward. Let's get behind Harrison Walls and let's push them over that finish line and get them in the White House. But let's not rest on our laurels. Let's not sit back and think it's over yet, folks, because we still have a ways to go and we have to stay focused. We're going to watch Trump dig in. We're going to watch Vance dig in. And the mistake they're going to make is they're going to keep talking because they can't shut up because they think this act works with everybody. Well, it may work with the few people who are still hanging, still hanging on to this, and they're hanging on to it because of the bitterness and resentment and hatred they feel in their heart. But those people are in the minority, and we're going to show them once and for all who, who is the majority come November.